Thank you for joining us today for our webinar simulation for pipeline integrity, including welding process. Our webinar will be about 45 to 50 minutes long, and we will have a Q&A session at the end. So please feel free to ask us any questions, and we'll try our best to get them answered at the end. Um, today's presentation will be presented by uh, Arindam Chakraborty, who is the Vice President of Advanced Engineering at VIAS. Uh, Dr. Chakraborty has a PhD in mechanical engineering from the University of Iowa and has over 10 years of experience in solid mechanics and design, nonlinear FEA, fatigue and fracture mechanics, reliability analysis, composite structures in oil and gas, nuclear and structural design. Um, he has managed many FFS projects, provide uh, training in FFS, fatigue and fracture mechanics, FEA, probabilistic analysis. Uh, he also engages with pressure vessels and piping conferences um, uh, committees. He chairs conference sessions and he is also involved with ASME and API uh, code committees. He is um, the vice president of advanced engineering at VIAS and he can be contacted at um, achakraborty at viascorp.com. Um, now I would like to um, hand it over to Arindam and he can get started. Uh, we had a uh, webinar last year, so this is kind of part of part of it is a group from that webinar and also uh, we have added some welding sim simulation, which might be of interest to all of you. Uh, with uh, with me, I also have Subhadeep Maiti, who is our senior simulation engineer. So Subhadeep have been working uh, in, in the industry as well as for the SOAR systems abacus. So he has a very good degree in uh, simulation using abacus and other, other software solutions. Uh, and also I have with me Srikant, uh, who is our uh, director of simulation services. Uh, Srikant uh, has a background in computational mechanics. Uh, he will be from Brown University. and He was also with the SO um, for long more than 10 years. Um, so with that, I will... Uh, with that, I will go ahead and start the presentation. Trying to move the slides. Okay, so we'll we'll start with a brief overview of our company, what we do, who we are, and all, um, and hopefully we'll find something that we can help you with. Uh, then I'll briefly talk about the fitness for service introduction. So what what it what is meant by fitness for service and how it comes in the picture and how we can try to solve them. So we'll talk about the level three assessment a little bit. Then I have some slides on welding process simulation. Uh, and then we'll talk about some plugins. These are these are Abacus plugins, but think of it as generic automation plugin tool. And then we'll uh, discuss some case studies, and finally we'll open up for question and answer. And um, it can be anything regarding your software training needs or consulting services. So we'll we'll have a discussion about that. So we we are located, our main office is in Houston. We started at Houston. Now we have expanded into many different places uh, around uh, in the US as well as in Canada. We have a presence in Toronto. Uh, we do have multiple industry experience uh, and how, how it helps us is I, I, I think we, we can connect um, many different uh, industry applications and how to solve the problem. So maybe some of the time the wheels are already invented. So you just have to apply that to another industry problem. Of course, the loading and all the thing may be different, but approaches can be similar on how you tackle those problems. So in our team, we have a very good uh, depth and breadth of experiences within the industries and, and along the technical domain. Uh, we have uh, mostly PhDs and masters in many different areas like solid mechanics, fluid mechanics, materials and corrosion, 
optimization reliability and we also have people from data analytics in case if you are wondering of any application let us know uh, one of our main focus is also uh, we apart from doing uh, consulting is also we get involved with uh, software uh, sales and support uh, for the source systems Emulia products and also the other products like Kitia which is a CAD software Delmia is a is, is a uh, automation the industry automation software and then Enovia uh, is uh, um, Enovia is part of the 3D experience which is more of a platform service and apart from Apple because there are also eyesight fe safe and dosca which which adds value to what you can do with abacus so it extends I, I would say the functionality and also added functionality apart from abacus so these are all part of the simulia portfolio eyesight is a i said is an uh, the automation or parametric optimization and automation uh, capability software software has the capability so fe safe is more for fatigue uh, analysis and tosca is for uh, non-linear optimization uh, we do work with PLM consultancy services as well. So if there is some need, let us know. Uh, and uh, I'll briefly talk about the technical capabilities that we have. So pretty much all all sorts of FEA, CFD related analysis we do. So this is kind of like a screenshot uh, which might be relevant to the discussion that we have. Uh, we are also uh, developing skill sets with the electromagnetic uh, analysis. So we are trying. We are, we are uh, working with the so systems as well so uh, uh, with uh, to to perform some work to where we are uh, looking into the electromagnetic uh, effect on the materials and vice versa uh, we we also do a lot of simulation automation so if you have any need uh, do let us know so this is specifically for our fitness for service related fracture mechanics and all those capabilities so we we do both code based as well as uh, as as well as analysis with it, with uh, modeling the crack in the FEA model, and also use damage modeling and uh, leak before break analysis, probabilistic fracture mechanics, and all uh, low cycle and high cycle fatigue vibration analysis, and definitely API level three, uh, five set level two, level three, level one, anything. But um, in today's conversation is more about the level three uh, per API five seven nine. And we are also familiar with other courses, PS7910, ASME, Section 3, Section 8, Section 11. Uh, these are some of our operational support capability. We do have a team in India as well. So they they, they kind of uh, helps us with some, uh, some of the integrity management, risk assessment, planned operating CAD drawings, and those kind of projects. Uh, we also do root cause analysis. So we have a materials and corrosion engineer with us. And with our analysis team, uh, we, we perform root cause analysis as well. Uh, these are uh, some of the CFD capabilities, uh, as you can see. And, and the way we have put it, and as you can see from the picture, these are more towards the process industry and all. Uh, so uh, any uh, process or flow through a pipeline, of course. Uh, so uh, we, we do a lot of fluid structure interaction, uh, pulsation, vibration problem, any sort of heat transfer, slamming and sloshing. Uh, we also do the chemical reaction part of it, erosion and corrosion, blast explosion, uh, separation, mixing, and all. This is, uh, this is a uh, excerpt from, from some, one of the courses that we offer. We, we do offer industry-related courses, uh, including uh, standard courses in Abacus, as well as uh, we do customized courses where you will, you will probably already know Abacus to some extent and you want to do a deep dive into that. So we can do say some contact convergence and also show um, how you can use Abacus for your problem of interest. So we can, we can do those customized courses as well. So if you have any interest to let us know. Uh, this is for API 579 of course. So this, this shows how uh, and also the uh, we are developing a SME design by analysis course as well. So this shows how you can using Abacus how you can solve problems with it with uh, various uh, analysis in API five seven nine point level three. And I'll I'll briefly those who probably uh, don't know much about the different levels, so I'll have a slide for that which I'll talk in briefly. So I think this is this is probably the most important uh, slide for to understand what a fitness for service can be and what is a fit, uh, why we need to do that uh, and in general like I used uh, I long back I took a corrosion course so the idea 
uh, the the instructor there uh, told that uh, I mean when we make a metal when we make a pipeline or any component you you take something from nature which is already corroded so that that's the ground state so you put energy to purify things and make something out of it so you 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 liquefy them and all this right so you go through a process of putting energy into the system so it's gonna try to always go back to to the ground state so it's gonna get to a corroded state again so that's why corrosion uh, it will react with environment and loading uh, can accelerate that corrosion. So all this thing has to be taken into consideration and it's always there. So no, I mean, the, what we used to uh, uh, told that uh, corrosion always happens, it's about the rate of the corrosion. So most of the time there is a, there's like a bottom curve for fitness for service. You start start, a, start an equipment or, plan, or, or entire piping system, you know, initially there will be some defects and all these are more, more of a, like infant mortality so so like the things doesn't were not probably put in there may be some loosening of the bolts and something like that then then you will have a problem and then but after that things stabilizes but later on in the life then again you start having this corrosion problem and that's where the fitness for service comes in uh, so you will have a non crack like feature or crack -like feature and then you you will try to analyze it with more information and see if if the component can can work uh, within the given situation and how long it will work. So, so is the fitness for service is the ability to demonstrate the structural integrity of an in-service component containing a flaw or damage. So the flaw or damage has to be there. And sometimes also it can be, I mean, it doesn't have to be corrosion. It, it, it can be an initial weld defect and all, right? Lack of fusion and all these things. So uh, it provides a quantitative engineering analysis tool. So the, I think the quantitative word is very important uh, because it, it instead of qualitatively looking at things, it, it shows you with numbers. Uh, so, and you can make a more more uh, informed judgment about whether it is fit for continuous service. And the code does provide the background for that. So there is industry consensus and it's based on research and, and discussion and experience uh, that uh, that determines how we should do it. So there, there is a rhyme and reason behind all, all the procedures. So it addresses the imperfection uh, uh, in the equipment fabrication or in service degradation. So it can be both of them. Uh, it helps uh, provides a rational approach for to to look at the problem. So it's a FFS is an interdisciplinary approach. It requires knowledge from all different sorts of uh, faculty. So you have to you have to understand the material behavior, operating scenarios, stress analysis, and inspection tools. So everything comes together. So this is this is a very multidisciplinary project or approach that you will have to take when you get onto your fitness for service analysis. So there are various levels of uh, assessment. So there's a level one, two, and three. Uh, so briefly how it goes is the level one, you will have less information. You will make a lot of assumptions and there's a lot of conservatism in it. Uh, so first you will try to do a level one assessment. Say you have a, uh, you have a lack of uh, wall loss, you have a wall loss, local metal loss. So you will try to see, okay, what is the minimum uh, thickness I can get? And if the minimum thickness is okay, then you are fine. So that's kind of a level one process. A level two, you will do some sort of analytical calculation and all. You will probably do a little bit of profile of the thickness loss there. Uh, so generally level one and level two, it can be done within the plant engineering uh, and and you don't, you don't need a very advanced uh, specialization or anything. Uh, so, and, and then when you go to the level three, it's kind of open. It, it, it says uh, you basically have as much information as possible on the material, on the loading, on the environment. Uh, and then you have, try to do a high fidelity model using finite element. CFD, you can perform CFD, which gives the load to the finite element. If it is an FSI problem, you do an interaction. So you, you have this uh, analysis uh, methodologies available uh, using all these uh, numerical techniques. And then you have, you have to gather more information uh, and then do, uh, do a very accurate sort of analysis. So what happens is your conservatism is less. So if something doesn't pass in level one and two, if you get more information, if you do the right way, follow the code, then the chances are you will be able to show that your component is okay because now you have more information and in fact you can depend on your level three from fidelity point of view.
So today's presentation, we are mostly, uh, we are pretty much concentrating on level three. So there are, so if you look at the API 579 code, so it, 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 is, it is based on, so the, the parts are based on within the code, uh, the kind of damages that you have. Now, then there are, there are failure modes. So any damage can lead to some of this failure mode. So most of the time, uh, what we'll be concentrating is for plastic collapse, local failure, collapse from muckling and failure from cyclic load. And sometimes you also need to uh, look at uh, look at the deformation whether it's compatible uh, with your functionality requirements. So if something may not be failing, but it may be deforming in a way that the functionality is hampered. So that's also you need to check. Uh, there are three different. Uh, th there are generally elastic analysis, elastic plastic, and limit load. So there there are certain. Uh, some, I mean, one is more conservative than the other one. So you can uh, you can do all those kind of analysis. So if the most conservative one passes, then you don't have to do the, the other check. Right? So uh, there's a term called like sharpening your pencil as needed. So you, you don't want to start with a very complicated analysis, even within level three. So you start with something which has a little bit more conservatism, uh, a little bit more assumption. If it doesn't work, then you go to another deeper level of analysis. So that's how generally uh, you will approach the problem. So having said that, so we'll we'll discuss about the welding process simulation capabilities, and and this this one focuses on on the solution that's uh, provided within Abacus. Uh, so there is a free plugin uh, that is available for download, and you can use that. Um, also, uh, the one one thing about welding simulation is um, so what we are I'm trying to tell here is. It, it's the general generic nature of the problem. So if you're using other software, of course you, you can do that. But the example shown here is using Abacus. Uh, why it is important? Because uh, because most of the time, a well is the place where you will see a lot of crack-like feature and all. So for crack-like features, uh, getting getting through uh, getting through the, uh, to understand the loading is very important, and then, then the residual stress that comes from the welding process become becomes something that you need to consider. So some of the time, so code has has uh, some guidance on what the residual stress will be. Some, but sometimes you can do a more accurate analysis using by trying to simulate the welding process itself. And also sometimes there may be a concern, uh, so you can look at what welding process will minimize my concern. So all this gives you a pretty handy tool. Uh, of course, there is a validation is very important, and I'll we'll, we'll talk about that. So there is a it's called Abacus Welding Interface or AWI. It's a plugin available for Abacus CAE, uh, and so it uses a realistic thermal boundary condition to solve the temperature profile within the weld. So it it it, uh, it basically goes by solving. The, Taking the things to the to a certain maximum temperature and then cool down from that, and depending on the weld path, then it will the temperature can rise back again, and depending on where your torch is, and then it's it by simulating the welding process, then it's cooling down and all. So what it is doing, it's it, it's uh, it's showing you using the material model in the constitutive relationship, you will look at the residual stressor that is induced within the weld. So it generates a evolving weld geometry uh, using using a star model chain. Those of you who are familiar with Abacus, so you you will know what that is. But uh, it, it's uh, something in the Abacus input file. So uh, we can we can talk in details later on. It generates the evolving film condition for the surfaces as well because your surface is changing, right? The surface that you expose is changing, so it it takes care of that. <laughs> So this is something how it looks like. Uh, so it streamlines the generation of welding simulation in Abacus. So this is just a plugin tool. So think think of I mean everything at the core it is it is using uh, it is going through input file. So you are generating input file like any analysis. But it it gives you you can do this problem manually everything right. But it gives you a very streamlined uh, properly and also it is kind of QA because you. We will not be doing a mistake in the workflow because the workflow is already there. So you will specify your well bead and, and all the path specification, the controls and the steps and film and the radiation uh, radiation parameters. And uh, then it, it does look like a model tree based as, as you will see in Abacus, it, uh, there is a model tree. So it, it, it keeps the same sort of visual thing. 
uh, it allows you to analyze, you will find the temperature, you will find the stress strains and the displacement. So you will find the residual stresses, you will find the temperature profile and the distortion. And this has been uh, uh, this has been uh, used for a long time. Has been has been validated uh, with uh, with data uh, with other test data and all or other simulation uh, solutions. Uh, but uh, it's uh, strongly recommended that when you are doing a welding simulation, then you will do your own validation and all, uh, just to make sure. And also material properties. So uh, there there is a you can uh, kinematic hardening and all this thing comes in so you want to make sure your material characterization is accurate so uh, what are the benefits i guess it's an auto or it's an automation script so the thing is it makes your life very simple it makes it uh, structured sorry i don't know why it moved to the next place uh, so the, it's it's a complex simulation so think of it as the beads are you're putting one bead after another it goes through a certain path and gets repeated so you can easily put the geometric feature you can create multiple weld passes it's a nonlinear temperature dependent material property uh, every everything is there uh, set up as a process so all you have to do is kind of give the input so somebody doesn't has, have to be an expert on making this model. Otherwise, welding simulation needs quite a significant amount of expertise within an abacus environment. So this takes it down from the, takes it out of the FEA expertise and put it into more like an engineer who knows the input, who understands the problem. Of course, you have to look at the solution and, and, and understand what it is telling. But from the FEA model setup skills, it, it reduces enormously the burden. So um, it predicts, the, I think we have already talked about it, the residual stress distortion and all, and then what you will do, it, it doesn't really predict the fracture and damage by itself, but you can, you can use the residual stress, you can do your fracture and damage assessment. Uh, optimization, so if you think of it, what we are doing here is there are a lot of parameters, so you can, you can do an optimization study with that as well. So that will be like a generic parametric optimization where based on one, one set of parameter, you will use, use this model. And, and you, can, you can do uh, like a fair, you sort of like, if you, if you see a high temperature going somewhere or, or a very high residual stress, you, you can change your weld, welding parameters within the simulation and you see how those are affecting your final uh, output of interest, which may be temperature or residual stress. Uh, or distortion. Now, one of the thing here is uh, sometimes the numbers. There is a lot of statistical variation. If you if you even do two very highly controlled tests and and find out uh, using a test what is what is the residual stress, you will, you will see there are there are some differences. So there is a lot of the there's something called aleatoric and epistemic uncertainty. So uncertainty, so something there is inherent uncertainty. It's not because you don't know something. So and that is a literary uncertainty it will always be there it is kind of high in a welding process right so and, and it also depends how you how you keep the quality of the welding process and also there is a epistemic uncertainty some of the things we see uncertain because we don't we don't know all the we don't have all the knowledge so one of so that that will be here as well because you if you do simulation it will not be accurately matching with what you will find with one test or another right but what uh, what I think it's very important here, what it gives you, it gives you an idea of what is going on there. So you can get a profile. The numbers may not be exactly same as if you do a test, but they will be close enough. They will give you the trend. They will give you show you the effect of different parameters, which are extremely important information as well. So how we will use it so there is a uh, so you know the manufacturing solution which is like the welding process so we do the analysis we find the residual stresses and distortion and all then we can do a failure assessment fracture mechanics based calculation or we can look at how how the displacement is happening how it is affecting the stress strain field when you apply the operating loads and then you can you can do a probabilistic analysis within that and then based, I mean, you can do a probabilistic analysis or you can do a design evaluation as well. Like it doesn't have to be probabilistic analysis. You can just set some parameters with certain values, see how, how the trend is. And then based on that, you can make more informed decisions. 
Uh, so here, uh, here is an example uh, of a benchmark problem that uh, I think it's a, it's a video there, so hopefully it will. So as part of the validation process, uh, what uh, what we have done is so there has been a study uh, a study done extensively for uh, a lot of experimental tests and all. So we have taken one of those uh, open literature papers, and we have. Try, we have tried to simulate the same, I mean, we have taken the same parameters that have been used in the test and simulated using the AWI and, and compared the numbers. So as part of the validation work, we needed to compare the uh, experimental data. So what we have done is, uh, in the experiment, they have placed thermocouples along the well path. So we have also in the simulation, we have measured the temperature profile uh, at the similar locations. And we also looked at the residual stresses uh, from the simulation and compared with what they have measured uh, at the at the test a bench test so and and the validation uh, came out to be pretty close uh, so this is this is one important factor you you want to whenever you take a software right there there's sort of always a verification and validation so validation is extremely important for a building simulation So now I'll briefly talk about the fitness, fitness for service plugin. So this is something I don't want to get into the details for that. So one of, one of the thing is, uh, but but just to see as an idea how powerful it can be. So so say material uh, taking the code minimum values and and there is a temperature derating thing. So there there are formulas that you can use and get your stress strength curve. So this is something you will probably repeatedly use it. So what you can do is you can create a material library in your Abacus environment, and you can you can use this very uh, easy plugin, uh, and then it will create the material properties. One thing I will always say whenever you are using a plugin, I mean from from any place, whether you develop it internally, uh, so or, or you use it say from uh, from Dassault or any other company, always do some tests. Make sure that you understand what the plugin is doing, and always keep your eyes and minds open because there, there may be an error. So engineer, it is, at the end of the day, it's the engineer's responsibility to look at, we'll look at the accuracy of what he or she is doing. So um, if you have this plugin, uh, I would suggest like do something Excel spreadsheet and just make sure it works fine. So there's another example of thickness mapping tool. So we have, uh, we have many times problems where we need to look at the uh, thickness uh, profile uh, within, within the, uh, 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 close, close to a maybe a nozzle to vessel connection and all these things. So you can map. So in in a uh, shell, uh, you can map the thickness. Uh, so you can vary the thicknesses within that sh uh, shell element, and then you can do perform your analysis. So this makes the life very easy. So it takes a data thickness map data from an Excel spreadsheet, which normally comes from the field, and then you will you will do the analysis very quickly. So this is a fracture mechanics plugin tool, uh, which. Uh, uh, we have internally uh, worked on uh, so this helps create a uh, pipeline gut weld uh, uh, and this this is a blunted crack tip so this is not a sharp crack so this is, this is more of a uh, bl blunted crack where you have a high plasticity and all which was typical for some case that we were working on what it does is uh, creating this crack tip uh, mashing and all these things is a, is a very difficult process so it makes makes an automation script out of it. So you just give the input like AWI. It is similar. So you give the input. All the complex modeling stuff is done within the within the automation software. Automation plug. So these are something to give you an idea of how you can enhance your uh, your um, uh, I would say your productivity uh, to by using plugins. So these are some examples. There can be something else as well. And we do help companies with those if you have any need to let us know. So now some of the case studies, uh, hopefully I'm, I'm doing okay on the time. Uh, so this one is a simulation of thermomechanical stress in induction pipe bending. So, uh, and I, we have put the case studies in a way kind of like shows different applications uh, from from simulation. And so you can, you can see the product and all may be different. So you may have a different need. Uh, but it will be the process will be similar. So here, what we are doing is we are basically there is a th thermal process going on, and uh, at a high temperature we are we are creating bed. So there are some certain concern about how how the pipe is getting stretched and uh, how what was the final thickness. 
So this using simulation, we have looked into what is the final thickness that is coming out and there was some match with what they have uh, they have been observing at the manufacturing uh, uh, place and then they what the next step was to actually see what they can change in the process so that that thickness uh, they were getting some small thickness so that that should not happen so they have looked into the process using simulation see which works and then went out and tried it and, and then move forward so instead of doing uh, sort of random iterations simulation can in a, in a very cost-effective and timely manner it can help you uh, minimize your you know, test or minimize your attempt to get to a solution so this uh, heated tube integrity for uh, problems so there was a uh, so we we use a creep subroutine um, that uh, is based on the api 579 level 3 key persistent procedures it's a nine chrome one moly uh, material and there was a bulge that appears after certain hours of service. Uh, we have performed a thermomechanical analysis and feed damage was assessed and then we looked into the bulge and compared with what, what we have observed. Uh, this is an example for a piping system where there was a concern at the support area for locally thinned uh, profile. So what, what we have done is uh, we, we did a combination of beam element as well as 3D elements. So at the locally thinned area, we have used the, we have used the 3D element and we have put the profile that has been measured uh, from, from the field. And then we have we have done that we have taken the entire piping system and done did an analysis using thermal expansion and internal pressure. So here you can combine. So again, another thing, one thing is about the theory. So you don't need to. You can do a simplistic analysis first. If it passes, then then you are fine. If not, then you go do more and more complicated physics and all this. Same thing for the modeling. So you don't want to make your entire model unnecessarily very complicated, like capturing everything everywhere. So you want to focus your attention and your energy into the areas which are more important. The others, if it is just carrying the load to your area of interest, you can do a simpler model for that. So this is something you always should keep in mind when you are using the software, even though, I mean, sometimes nowadays that's not a problem because of the hardware, but you will, later on you will see it just unnecessarily takes more time and a project, what happens is maybe initially you thought you will do 10 analysis and suddenly it happened that there will be that. 30 analysis. So then you will see the see the difficulty. So always try to be uh, as quick as as efficient as possible. So that mindset, I think, it helps. So this analysis of dent with rerounding. So basically, and and these are example problems that we have made. So this is not. I mean, the ideas are from uh, from what uh, what we have worked on, but the formation is we, we have created on our own. So. We perform simulations, so this is the dent, so you want to look at the, like, you want a plastic strain and also, uh, and then based on that, so it also creates, it's like a residual stress problem, so it creates a residual stress field, uh, right, like a welding simulation sort of, I can think, and then uh, we, with the stress, uh, existing stress field, then you put the operating loads and all, and then see what, what's going to happen, and also it creates cracks, you know, if you have a dent, then you have a more accurate representation of the stresses that you can use for your factory mechanics analysis. Uh, this uh, for a corroded pipe with a uh, quarter dent. Again, this this problem is is to show how I mean what amount of information can you put in uh, in in FEA. So if you can get get into very detailed analysis and it also gets a little bit complicated in terms of doing the machine and all this thing. Uh, but it, you will you will have more confidence on your numbers. So the fidelity will be high. And Abaga is a very general purpose software, so it, it, it's also very, that makes it extremely strong. And they're they are pretty good at nonlinear material behavior, any sort of contact and, and large displacement and also any, any, anything that pushes the boundary from linearity to nonlinearity, which in most of the cases when you have a problem, you cannot just rely on the linear behavior. It generally goes, you have to consider the nonlinear behavior. So that um, Abacus works pretty well with those kind of problems. Again, this is another example. Uh, so it, it was part of the previous one. So we just looked into the uh, external dent process and then check. Uh, then we looked at the PEQ and all the, also the stresses. So this is a different so modeling wise it's kind of similar um, but this is a gouge as a local metal loss uh, so some of the profiles will be different and also 
I mean, depending depending on on the uh, scenario, you may even include a crack in this model. This particular one doesn't have it, and then you can do it with the crack within the model. So all these things can be performed. Uh, this is to see a interaction. If you have two gouges, you want to see, okay, do I need to, I mean, consider them as one, maybe a bigger gouge or not. So we looked into the, how the stress profile is, just want to make sure, can we isolate them? So now these are, the previous ones were non-crack-like features. So this one now with the crack-like feature. Uh, one one of the thing is as you can see here uh, is is getting getting this contour uh, and then getting getting this uh, concentric circles uh, at at the contour, contour integral uh, area is is pretty challenging especially in in 3D modeling so it it takes some amount of time uh, to do that and also there are like kind of tricks I guess I mean if you just know from experience which works and not not. Uh, and then uh, what it what it helps is you actually put put the cracked behavior in the model. You can do linear elastic, elastic plastic, uh, any of those, uh, depending on what uh, solution or how how you pose the problem and what what uh, material property you are using. Uh, so what it does, it gives you an accurate representation through simulation, of course, uh, of your uh, fracture mechanics parameters. So cracked intensity parameter, J integral, cracked weapon displacement. Uh, uh, all these things can can be looked at, but it does does take quite a bit of effort. So maybe if you have a similar problem, you can try to come up with uh, like a sort of plugin that can help you. Uh, and there are also in the market there are also software is available which are specific to fracture mechanics software, and you can create the model for the crack and everything, and then you can take it to Abacus and do the analysis. So there are there are software solutions available for that as well. So this is just more information on the actual pipes. I'll, I'll so there was a, this is an example where you have a pitting corrosion. Uh, so what we did is we looked at the pit as a stress concentration, uh, concentrator, uh, and then we checked the stresses and strains. And also what we did is we considered the size of the pit as a crack. And we wanted to see uh, if, if there is a crack at the pit. Then, then we take this. Uh, we have taken the stress field and stress uh, values from the FEA, and we used a code-based analysis to perform the fraction mechanics calculations. Uh, this is uh, more related to some sort of indentation analysis, and it can be also forming. So we can think of it forming as a similar example. Uh, as you can see here, general, these are these, if you look at the crack path, these are not really standard. So they're not like elliptical or, or, or or like a long rectangular crack. So the modeling, there are there are challenges to do this kind of model, but uh, it shows that you can do it. And also, what it does is it it has taken there was a there was a there was an indentation problem, so it created a residual stress, and then the idea was to look at the uh, look at the area which develops high plastic strain and consider the crack. So it has to be imposed on. The residual stress has to be imposed when you do the uh, fracture mechanics calculation, and and Abacus has this capability where you can bring the residual stress and do the fracture mechanics analysis. Because your J integral, the the path, path independence of the J integral doesn't remain valid when you when you have additional residual stresses. So there are there's some tweaking that needs to be uh, needs to happen. So this is an example of pipeline lamination. So we looked into some lamination cases close to the weld, and and uh, some of some of them uh, were considered as crack as well. Uh, and under under the uh, it was a hydrostatic test, and we want to see if there there's a possibility of any failure. Yeah. Uh, uh, so this is on earthquake resistant Dr. Aaron pipe. So this is uh, this is a this is where we have uh, helped a company design and find a joint. A pipe joint which uh, which will have to which have to work under seismic load so there is a fault and uh, there are certain criteria that this uh, the this joint deform displacement and all this thing the movement of the joint has to make including the of course the stresses and strain so it should not fail and also it should not like deform beyond a certain uh, number so we have performed uh, a a complete simulation for that. This was a large diameter pipe, uh, so we didn't have a test or anything, and it was very expensive and time consuming. So what we have done in our approach is we have uh, there was tested available for a small diameter six inch pipe, and then we have, we have validated our model. 
with that six inch pipe results and then use the similar approach, uh, a similar workflow for, for the large diameter pipe. Uh, these are some of the examples of pipeline pipe soil interaction. Uh, so we have used combined already in the Grandian field for FEA modeling for the debris flow over a pipeline uh, for impact and all. And this is again the debris flow for a runoff distance calculation. So these are all these things. So you, if you if you have a uh, I mean if you have a uh, pipeline going through where there is a possibility of debris flow and all, so we can perform those analysis and give you more sort of quantitative idea about what maybe the risk involved. Uh, this is more of a is more of an integrity for it rather than so there is no like corrosion or anything going on of course right so. But I kind of think of it as a similar uh, nature, like where, where you are pushing the boundary, things are, I mean, adversely getting affected and you want to know what will happen. Uh, this is uh, for thaw settlement simulation. So there was a thermal mechanical interaction between buried pipeline and the permafrost. So we have, we have uh, done those analysis and when the thawing happens, then how it, how it puts uh, load on the pipeline and how it behaves. So if you're in a cold temperature region, then uh, well, it will be something that you might want to look into. Uh, this was a, for a frost heap problem again. So and here you can see we have used the uh, spring uh, for the interaction between the pipe and soil. Uh, these are uh, examples of, sorry, there was a typo. So example of application for AWI or welding simulation. So at, uh, I think mostly we'll be dealing with, with the pipeline or there's a two pipe T connection and all this thing. So th this shows that how you can take a FEA model and uh, do the welding process of the FEA. The standard pipe geometry will come from, from your FEA or CAD and then you will do the process, well, process simulation on that using the AWI and then look at the look at uh, all the output parameters. Now getting into some examples of uh, fluid related uh, analysis. So these are uh, some case studies for the multi-phase flow. So uh, this is this is a jumper. So jumper you can think of there are two two uh, uh, two ends, two hubs, and between that there is a flexible pipe. So it, it can be any any sort of structure. And think of it in a generic way. So we can do a free surface analysis, internal multi-phase flow, fluid in this turbulence, uh, direct fluid structure interaction, and then some of the things that we'll look into is the pressure fluctuation, how how, the, how it is creating the vibration and all this. So and, and we you can you can combine the input from the CFD and take it to the FEA and, and do a um, risk assessment like a fatigue life and all these things. So this is uh, for a flow-induced motion. Uh, so again, uh, there's a couple of fluid structure interaction problem. There is a turbulence and also pulsation. So some of the results as you can see here is the coming from the fluid is the pressure and all the pressure and the forces. Then we look at how the displacement is happening and how is the stress and strain. And you can always, always include an optimization on top of it, always do a sensitivity study so all these things can be performed. So as long as the core core analysis is there, you can put the wrapper around this, uh, including fatigue and all. So this is for the erosion assessment. Uh, this uh, there is a couple already in the granular particle tracking uh, method. So basically, think of it as a there is a momentum transfer that happens because that's how the erosion at, at a very uh, granular level that's what's going to happen so with fluid mechanics analysis you have a better idea of how the particles are impacting and all and then there is there are sort of correlations that you can use to come up with the erosion assessment so what what it can help with is it will show where the possibility of erosion is and kind of give you an idea of how much erosion will happen so if you have a uh, features so you have to make a feature assessment for how much erosion will happen in time and all we can do that. Uh, similarly for the corrosion analysis again the corrosion part of the corrosion is also how the flow is there uh, so there is a material environment and the flow right so this captures the flow part of it and then uh, you, you, then there are correlations and all that's available which will tell you how much the corrosion has happened. So that's kind of uh, the end of my presentation uh, with all the case studies and all. So I'll open it up for the question and answer. And let me know if you have any question, either related to our services or 
anything that we have described here. And thank you all for attending. Okay, thank you, Random, for that um, great presentation. So we are taking questions now. If you guys have anything, please uh, let us know. And we'll be answering some questions live. So it seems like we have our first question. Is AWI plugin available for free? Yeah, it should, should be down. Send them the information. Yes. Okay. Are there only specific geometries that Fracture Mechanics plugin can model? Uh, the one we showed, it's sort of an internal thing. Uh, for that one, yes. Uh, so it is not generic to any, any geometry, but uh, it, it's a pretty generic setup that we have made, but we had to tweak it more for any, any arbitrary shape. Uh, and of course, some of the arbitrary shape will not work because of the problem with the machine. It, it has like kind of nothing to do with the plugin, so any plugin will may have that problem. But generally, you will not have a very crazy shape for a crack. But uh, to answer the question, this is this was more for a blunted crack tip uh, with uh, with the elliptical flaw. It can be an internal IDOD, but if it is a different sort of flaw, then then it will a non elliptical like a measured actual flaw side then it will be different. So, uh, okay, so one question, there is a what kind of risk assessment service you can provide and any risk-based program uh, that has been used. So we, we work with uh, more on, on with a contractor side, but what we do from the risk assessment point, so we, we help them with, with qualitative risk assessment, sorry, quantitative risk assessment as well. So we come in more from the analysis side of the risk assessment. Okay, we have one more question. Can we model HAZ? APEC affected zone. Okay. So well yeah, I haven't um, included that there. So you actually, so it will be a phase transformation. Uh, so you can, if you include phase transformation, then you can sort of get the behavior uh, basically, you, you, can, you can find the yield and the toughness values, the hardness values, and all this uh, for the heat effect. So. Okay, we have one more question asking uh, Does VICE provide training for FFS? Yes, uh, we do. And I had one slide over there uh, where, where I've mentioned. So we have we we have missile service courses which are aligned with the API 579 uh, using Abacus. And also, we are in the process of developing a design by analysis course, which is going to be based on ASME section eight. And, and these are kind of similar methodology and all these things. So, so yeah, and, but but if you want to take beyond that, and if you have a certain application in mind that you want to uh, understand better, uh, you can always request a customized course, and we'll, we'll talk to you. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any more questions, guys? Oh, is that time? Okay. Yeah, we're all okay. We have one more. So, fracture plugging, we have internally, yes, we have internally done for that. But uh, uh, if, you, if you have a need for that, we can definitely uh, talk afterwards. Uh, so only thing is is the like, uh, quality assurance and all these things. So before, I mean, if you want to make it commercial, there's a lot of quality assurance that you have to do. So that plugin was used kind of by the people who already kind of have a very good knowledge on the fracture mechanics. So we haven't deployed it to everyone. Okay. So I mean, okay. The question is, can you? Elaborate a little more about level three analysis, elastic plastic analysis, and local failure. Uh, so the the basically there are different failure mechanisms. So things can fail if you have a if globally there is a high stress, 
or things can fail if there is a local local high stress or so there are different metrics. So the uh, the local failure is based on more damage mechanics principle, uh, and then the plastic is more uh, solid mechanics. So you look at look at the how it's like a net section yielding sort of thing. And uh, regarding elastic, plastic, and limit load, is is what behavior you are assuming for the material. So. Uh, if you do a limit load, then you are assuming your material to be elastic, perfectly plastic. So, uh, and then you basically look at, I'll, I'll give an example for low plastic failure, which is more like the global collapse. Uh, so if, if your solution doesn't converge, then you will say it's a failure. So, and that's kind of conservative because of course material doesn't behave in that way. Uh, so an another way you will do it is the elastic plastic, which is probably the most accurate, uh, and so have the less conservatism. And also in elastic analysis, you will you will make certain assumptions because you will not consider the plastic part of it. So there, the uh, code provides you the guidance on how to take care of that. Okay, so do you use FSA for a dent fatigue analysis for a pipeline? Now. The way FeSafe works is it, it is independent of the problem you are doing from the FEA side of it. So I would say, I mean, I haven't, or we haven't done it uh, by ourselves, but I don't, see, I don't see any reason why we cannot. So you can do a dent simulation as long as, but there has to be a cyclic load, of course, right? So denting will give you some initial stress. You will do a cyclic loading then you will get the load versus cycle uh, information. As long as you have that, then if we say full, we'll crunch in the number for the fatigue. So I think it, it, it should be doable. And if you need more help with if uh, let us know. And we recently had a if webinar as well. Um, so if you haven't seen that, we can I mean, send us an email, we'll send you the link for that. Yep. Okay, it seems like that was our last question. What oh, is this more? There's something more. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So okay, so one of uh, one of the attendees have asked, is there a way to receive a recording from the webinar? I will get back to you on that. So generally, we'll all share the recording. So depend depending on, I mean, it might be a uh, like a share through the YouTube and all, or it, it will send you a link where you can see the recording. I mean, see and hear the recording. Thank you. Okay, I think. Yeah, I mean, you all have a good rest of the week. And uh, if you have any further question that pops up later, uh, please do not hesitate to uh, let us know. I will, will be more than happy to get back to you. And as I mentioned before, so if you have any need on consulting uh, software or, or training, uh, do let us know. So we, we help in all, all the three areas. Thank you and you all have a great day. Thank you everyone.